Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who catches his wife having sex with another man in their home. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. I-24 male used to believe in love at first sight. But recently it's hard to believe that such a thing exists anymore. I married my wife 23 last winter after only 10 months of dating. Of course, I always said it was love at first sight, and my wife would always agree with me. It was a spur of the moment, exciting and unreal marriage. We decided one day that we wanted to get married, and the next week we had rings. Cheap rings, but we both hoped that the rings would be made special by the experiences we had while wearing them. It was really the best time of my life. Both my wife and I are enrolled in college. Personally, I want to be a mathematics professor, so I've been grinding through what seems like infinite curriculums and credit hours since I graduated high school. This past semester was my final for my master's. My wife was studying for a master's in biology, and she was struggling to pass a few extremely intense classes and labs. Together, we had a lot on our plate, including a large amount of debt and not a lot of money due to our college agendas. We ended up sharing a one-bedroom apartment for the regular school year, which really cut down on our costs, and really increased the time we spent together, which was always a bonus. Because we shared a place to live that wasn't on campus, we carpooled as much as we possibly could when we needed to go to campus. We would carpool to campus even if one of our classes wasn't for another three hours, spending time on homework and other things in the library if needed. For this reason, I was instantly suspicious when I asked her if she was ready one day and she told me she wasn't coming. Not only did she refuse to come, she acted like it wasn't abnormal for her to skip out on a ride. As I drove away from our apartment, I realized that her behavior recently had become somewhat more distanced and uninvolved. She had turned down intercourse a few nights in a row, which was fine with me since finals were approaching rapidly. However, my excuses could not cover for her sudden refusal. On that particular day, I planned on staying on campus until late. However, I was a little paranoid, and I'll admit that I accidentally left my notebook at home, and I acted like I didn't notice until about an hour had passed. That's when I went back to the apartment and checked on my spouse. She was on the couch, effing another guy harder and more passionately than she had ever been with me. I slammed my backpack to the ground and the two stopped. The man asked who I was, and my wife sheepishly replied that I was her husband. I saw the guilt in his eyes, and as he dressed himself, he started to apologize to me. He said something along the lines of, This sucks for you, man. I'm glad I never tied myself up. And left, leaving me and my wife to pick up the pieces. I started by asking her how she met this guy. She told me he was an old friend, and that she had been seeing him on the side only very recently. Before she could even start on the brevity of her dishonesty, I started to break down. I raised my voice. I began to ask her why she had done it. Honestly, I yelled at her, cursing her out pretty badly. She decided to go nuclear. Suddenly, I was the problem. I never had enough money. I never had a big enough penis. I never was good enough at anything for her. She totally freaked out, berating me and yelling at me like I was the one who had cheated. She ended her tirade by telling me her old friend was better than me in all the ways she could think of. During this freakout, all feelings for her I'd ever had dissipated. Eventually, she stormed out the door, and I decided I didn't care where she went. Finals week became impossibly difficult for me. Dealing with both things was just about too much for me to take. I was about to just write off school entirely, willing to take all of my classes again in exchange for less stress at the moment. That's when one of my wife's friends called me. She told me how sorry she was for what happened to me. She also told me that my wife had become a very undesirable person in the following days, and that for this reason, the friend wanted to share something with me. She told me that my wife has stayed with the man who she cheated on me with, who turned out to be a drug dealer. He had been arrested and his house impounded. My wife had nowhere to stay, and in her distress had withdrawn from school. The friend promptly hung up, but I was left with a smile. This little bit of information was all I needed to finish out the semester, and I knew I was better than her as I aced every test. I'm sorry this happened to you, OP. I'm sorry your ex-wife shattered and ruined some part of you that believed in love at first sight. 
Your ex-wife is a horrible person for what she did to you. Her cheating on you is bad, but her having sex with the guy in a home you shared with her makes everything worse. She was tired of the marriage and she wanted out of the relationship. I wish she had ended it instead of cheating. You don't deserve to get your heart broken like that. I'm glad you didn't let what happened stop you from school. You've worked so hard for it. You shouldn't have to have a do-over because of her. She isn't worth it. Take care, OP. I hope everything works out for you. Story 2. Deep breath. Okay. Throw away account here. I, 33 male, have been married to my wife for eight and a half years now, and we've definitely had our ups and downs. There were times I thought she may be cheating on me, but I never had enough evidence to prove it. Then things would get better, I would take her word that she's always been faithful, etc. Lately, we've had one of those downtimes. We have kids, two and four, and are in a financial mess at the moment. Credit card debt, daycare, mortgage, and so on. That's been affecting both of us. We are both unhappy with our financial situation, and it's definitely sabotaging our love life. My wife has been dealing with it by going out with her friends, a lot, like twice a week or more. She also said she doesn't want to have sex because she's so depressed. Once again, I was concerned she may be cheating on me, but had no evidence. Sunday night, I looked her in the eye and asked her, are you cheating on me? Her reply, looking me in the eye was, no, that's not even an issue. I left it at that, but wasn't convinced. I've noticed a few texts from random guys that I thought she may be sleeping with, but her phone has a password on it. One time last week, it was unlocked long enough for me to see a text from a guy that she was trying to hook up with her friend that mentioned something about meeting up at a bar she was going to with some of her coworkers. She told me who would be attending that night and didn't mention his name or her friend that he was supposedly interested in. Still not enough evidence, but I tucked that into the back of my mind. Then on Saturday night, she went with her dad to his annual company party. I know for a fact that she was there, as were a number of her relatives that work for the same company. After the party, she slept at her uncle's house for a few hours, again verifiable, and came home early in the morning. After she got home and had slept for a bit, she asked me to get her cell phone for her. I unplugged it from the charger and saw that there was a text from that morning from a name I vaguely recognized. I didn't mention it, but put a lot of thought into who it might be. Then I remembered it was the name of a guy she lost her virginity to 17 years ago, and realized that she had probably texted him while reminiscing about the first time they had sex, which happened to be in the same bed at her uncle's house. It was then I decided I needed to figure out her phone password. Last night, she went to the gym after work and said she did a spin class and weights afterward. I didn't think too much of it because she's been working out pretty hard lately. She likes to stay fit anyway, but it's now obvious why she's working out extra hard. This morning, I saw her phone laying on the dining room table and thought I would give it a shot, since there were now two conversations I felt needed to be read. After a few tries, I figured out her password and went to her messages. Nothing from either guy, as she had deleted all those conversations. There was, however, a conversation with a coworker of hers. That conversation sent my head spinning, hands shaking, and made my knees bend with weakness. While I was pretty sure I was being played, I now had proof. The conversation paraphrased was pretty much, I haven't had great sex in a long time. I'll come over after spin class. Him saying his living girlfriend wouldn't be home until 9, and him giving her his address and instructions for the keypad. Because of the last bits, I'm not sure they've slept together before, but it doesn't matter. Even if they haven't, I know this isn't the first time she's cheated on me. So now what? I have legal coverage through my work, and I have called, but not yet spoken to, an attorney. I can't leave the house because, although this relationship going to shit really sucks, I will not leave my kids. They're the most important victims of this whole thing, and I don't want to lose custody of them. Seriously, I'm not planning to use them as bait, I just really won't give them up. If anyone leaves, it should be her. Of course, this is complicated by the fact that her sibling lives with us, but I don't really feel like adding any more identifiable details to this post. Sorry this post is long and possibly nothing new, but I have a lot on my mind and I don't really know what I should do. Should I confront her tonight? Please help. First update. I want to thank all of you, well, almost all of you, for your kind words, support, and advice. 
It's been one hell of a day. I've been home for a few hours now and I'm trying to play it as cool as possible since my phone consultation with the attorney isn't until tomorrow morning. I did stumble across a few more details that I'll leave out for now, mostly because I don't want to give too much away before we discuss things. I'll be sure to update you all again. As much as you've helped me get through today, I want to help the next person who comes along and needs some help. Thanks again, I'm off to try and sleep. Last update. I just had a nice long chat with my attorney. It was good to talk about things in a more technical sense, rather than just focusing on all the emotions. Especially after only one hour of sleep last night. Anyway, his basic advice was to discuss everything with my wife. As I mentioned in the comment below, I found more evidence on my wife's phone this morning. Basically, it was confirmation that she had in fact met up with the coworker from the text messages and had sex with him. But then the emails that I read, she is in fact meeting multiple partners and told at least one of them that she has had affairs in the past and mentioned them by year. Beyond this, there's not really much left to do but figure out how to divide our time with the kids and our shared property. Oh, and confront her about the cheating, of course. I plan to do that this weekend. Thanks again for reading this and for your help. I hope this can help someone else as well, preferably before things get this out of control. I'll keep you posted. Unfortunately, it seems like your wife is a serial cheat OP. I'm sorry this is happening to your family. The fact that you've always had a hunch that you've never confirmed makes this revelation way worse. This means that all this while, your intuition may have been right. It's a good thing that you've spoken to a lawyer. You should never stay with a cheating partner. Your kids are your top priority, and I hope you'll be given custody of them. Your soon-to-be ex-wife went on a path that she knew very well could destroy her family, which means she has no value for her family. So I think it's only fair that she stops being a part of the family. Now for some comments. If you're really done and don't want to try to work on it, counseling, etc., then I would not confront her until you talk to a lawyer. All you're going to do is get into a screaming match and upset the kids. That being said, if there's any part of you that thinks something is salvageable, talk to her when you can do so calmly about all your options. I'm sorry, good luck. You are handling this like a true boss. Your head must be spinning and your heart bursting, but you're handling this with textbook integrity and maturity. I suggest that you really consider how you will lay the blow down upon her. The weekend is almost here. I suggest using the time to really think through your delivery and try to plan it out as best as possible. You should be able to predict some of her response. I suggest you present her with some formal documents from a lawyer during the confrontation. This will add even more gravity to your words. She deserves no mercy. Good luck, brother. Hey brother, just wanted to let you know that I really feel for you and please update us as things develop. Also, I would just say that the whole staying with someone for the kids thing is criminal. The kids often suffer most in those arrangements. Although, I don't think you were really saying that was the case, more of just a post-relationship custody arrangement. However, if some wishful thinking nugget of nostalgia deep down inside of you is trying to imagine ways to maintain your marriage to a woman with so little integrity, empathy, or respect for you, then please don't cling to the staying for the kids life raft. Your children and yourself will be much worse off for it.